Here's a letter from Mr. D. McGee of Kansas City, Missouri. He says, Dear Request Performance, I heard you say on your program that you can turn the tables on people. How about doing a Sherlock Holmes story where Dr. Watson and Sherlock Holmes switch parts? Can we do it, Dick? Can we do it? Hmm. Don't forget, Junie, that as Richard Rogue, I'm an active member of the exalted and distinguished fraternity of radio detectives. Well, give. The first thing to do is ask the man who plays the role of Sherlock Holmes, Basil Rathbone. I'll be delighted to assist in answering uh, Mr. McGee's request, if it's all right with Dr. Watson. Well, what about it, Nigel Bruce? I say, you mean I'm to play Sherlock Holmes and solve the crime and get the girl and all that sort of thing? That's right, and Basil Rathbone will play Dr. Watson. <laughs> I say, that this ought to be a jolly bit of fun, jolly. Uh, Basil, may I borrow your pipe and your hound's tooth jacket? Certainly, and here's my dear stalker hat. Fine, I'll, I'll slip it on. There. Uh, how do I look in this deer stalker? Very nice. But uh, tilt it down a bit over your left antler. Oh. <laughs> there we are. Like this? That's fine, old boy. Music, old boy. Well, here I am in my lodgings in Baker Street with my good friend Dr. Watson beside me. Splendid characterization so far. <laughs> well, here we go again. I say, Watson, hand me my magnifying glass. Well, magnifying glass. Well, I'm the... I'm the... I'm the... What in the world are you doing? I'm playing Dr. Watson. But, uh, what are you saying? I don't know. <laughs> what have you been saying all these years? What a pity, my dear Watson, we don't have a fascinating crime to solve. Yes, yeah, it's a pity. It's a great... <laughs> pity. I think someone has been murdered. Amazing, Holmes. How, how, how would you arrive at that deduction? <laughs> Elementary, my dear Watson. If you will just open that door, you will find the mortal remains of a plumpish woman of 48 with graying hair... Hazel eyes, pale complexion, a blue dress, and a pink hat. Well, I'll open the door. Good gracious, for once, Holmes, you're wrong. Wrong? Well, it's a red hat. <laughs> there is only one thing to do. I'll reconstruct the crime. Watson, old fella, just place yourself outside the door, exactly where the corpse was standing. Very well. <laughs> now, I shall close the door. <laughs> Just as I thought. Dead. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> I say that. That's splendid. Now I can play Sherlock Holmes all the time. <laughs> what blows in here, Joes? A big pardon? Well, how come L. Rathbone is so horizontal? I don't quite follow you, old boy. Look, I'm a detective on the radio, too. What are you two squares up to? I was recreating a... Uh, a crime in order to solve it. Oh, Jenny, dear. You've got bats in your badges, boys. Recreating the crime got the go-by with the bustle. Got the go-by? Sure, that went out with button shoes. You're singing a tune from Saskatoon. Oh, really? Saskatoon? Tell me, old chap, uh, what's your name? Richard Rogue, private eye, and detective extraordinary. If some ace wants to dip a Betsy in your medulla, just ring Rogue. Well, why should anybody want to Betsy my medulla? <laughs> Well, you can never tell when some con you've helped can me bust out of the poke and try to stash your shiv in your chubby pink and white. My dear fellow, I am convinced that you'll go every bit as far in radio as I have. What makes you think so? Nobody can understand you either. <laughs> <laughs>